You guys ready? Yes. All right. So HL triangle currency. What does the HL triangle currency tell you about two triangles? Very much like the rest of the triangle uh, theorems that we've learned, right? They're, they're congruent. So basically, uh, again, here's a quick little picture. Two right triangles. They got to be right. They got to be 90 degree angles. All right. It's just because the computer. Like I said, humans are actually a lot better than machines, so don't undersell yourselves, all right? Okay. All right, so as long as a leg that's corresponding to another leg having to be congruent and their hypotenuse are both congruent to each other, there you go. These two triangles are congruent. That's all the HL triangle congruency is, hypotenuse leg. Cool? Yes. We don't really care about the angle because, right, Triangle, it's 90. Cool? Yeah. All right. So turn the page to 96. Uh, Let's just go straight to the congruency theorem itself. All right. So again, hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is... Again, this is eighth grade, right? So it's the longest side of a right triangle. And your legs, this could be the shorter leg. This could be the bigger leg. It just uh, depends on what you're working with, okay? Slope, by the way, uh, from algebra is just examining the two legs of a right triangle. So this is actually very relevant to algebra as well. All right. So you've already learned this, angle, side, angle. You've already learned side, side, side. You've already gotten sassy. And we already got angle, angle, side, right? And this is just the last one that we're learning, I believe. All right. So as it says before... Or as I said earlier, if a hypotenuse and a leg of a right triangle, it's got to be right, are congruent to the other hypotenuse and another leg of another right triangle, these two triangles are congruent. Does that make sense? All right, any questions before I move on? We are going to dive into a couple proofs just to play it safe. 296. Okay. All right. So if we look at this uh, example one, we got to prove that these two triangles are congruent. Where do I start? Gibbons. So they say these are right triangles. What does that give us? 90 degrees. It gives us a very good. It gives us an angle. Right? It gives us the 90-90s, right? Um, and they also make it more abundantly clear when they say angle C and angle F are right angles. That means by definition they have to be 90 degrees, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's something to kind of be aware about. Um, what else do they give us? Good. So notice how they marked A, B right here as C, and they marked uh, D, E as F. So they're labeling the sides. Now, why do they do that? Because it looks like they're setting up Pythagorean theorem, right? Because Pythagorean was all about right triangles. All right. And then lastly, they gave us B, C to E, F. They labeled that guy A, right? BC is A, and EF is D. Again, they're just getting ready for Pythagorean theorem. So we know the Pythagorean theorem is this, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What do we know about this triangle to find F, your hypotenuse? And that's exactly what we're doing here. Okay. Because C squared should be the same as F squared. 
All right. Okay, so all we're going to do is some basic substitution. A, B, or A squared plus B squared should equal D squared plus E squared. They should be the same, same. Especially if those two line segments were given to be congruent. All right, and that's what they said here. Since these guys are congruent, their measurements should be the same. So C should equal F. And we did say that C squared does equal F squared. So notice how we just set these two things equal to each other. All right, then they tell us some more congruency about the, the legs. All right, that means their measurements have to be the same. Therefore, A has to equal D. So substituting A for D in the above equation. So basically, we're doing this. We're going to have A squared. Um, let me make sure I do this correctly. Equal E squared. Because didn't we say that A is D? A equals D? So we just took out uh, this D here and replaced it with the A. Um, what do you guys notice real quick? Uh, could you, if we used algebra, could we subtract an A squared from both sides? And then all that's left is what? B squared, e squared. B squared equals E squared. So if you square root both sides, B equals E. Because we square root both sides. All right, there's a two up there. All right, so if B equals E, that shows what? That AC is congruent to? DF, good. Therefore, these two triangles are congruent by? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not by the HL triangle congruency right now. What did we use? We use this side here. We use this side here. We use this side here, right? And this side here, right? We just proved that this side is congruent to this side. Does that make sense? So we actually used side, side, side triangle congruency. And since we are able to prove by side, side, side triangle congruency, this is actually where HL triangle congruency comes from. It basically says we can prove it by side, side, side. Side, side, side proves itself on its own too. So it's like, it's like this, guys. It's like, hey, you know, Allison, she's a really good friend. Or Allison, hi Allison. She's a really good friend. She's a homie. She knows she has to be with my math, you know. And then uh, next thing you know, it's like Allison gets sick and I need somebody to help me with math. But Allison's like, yo, I know this kid over here. All right, Angelie, she knows her math too. Okay, Allison. And it's like, hey, Angelie, can you help me with math? And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's because, it's because, it's because Allie was like, hey, she works too. So SSS is hooking us up with HL. Does that make sense? Yeah. So SSS is, is basically validating HL's existence. Does that make sense? Sorry, I'm trying to use a metaphor or analogy that best gets the situation there. All right. So that's what happened with SSS. All right. Um, what kind of triangles do we have here? Right triangles. It, is it healthy to notice that right away? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It could. It could. It could lead to something. So be aware of that. Okay. All right. So uh, first things first. Determine whether there's enough information to prove that the triangles are congruent. Uh, do we have a side? Yes. Okay. Do we have the ninety degrees? Yes. So these true triangles are. Uh, do we have uh, the hypotenuse? Do we have a hypotenuse? We have a leg. How do we have a hypotenuse? Very good. The reflexive property. So reflexive property comes back to haunt us.
So they are right triangles. Therefore, yes, we have enough information. Um, we have WV congruent to XY, and that was given. All right, since that was given. Uh, step two, we had the uh, right angles. Okay, which uh, that was given. This is probably the part where your brain's like, wait, can I use HL? You know what I mean? That should be the part where you're thinking that. And then lastly, XW or WX is congruent to itself because they're being shared between the two triangles, that WX line segment is being shared. And that's, again, since the reflexive property. All right. So, yeah, we have enough for uh, HL triangle congruency. And that's how we would end the, the, the actual proof with that statement. Uh, okay, any questions? Okay, you guys do have a lot of uh, proof problems to practice, so get comfortable with those, okay? All your computers and programs that you guys use for your phones and whatnot, they all go through coding. Coding is nothing but line one, line two, line three, and all it is is just commands and if and then statements. If this person presses this button, go here. It's all built upon that. Okay, any questions? Everybody okay? Yeah, we're good. All right. So just a fair warning, I did look at your test. Uh, proofs like this, it's a thing. You have three proofs. Okay. Okay, you guys ready? Uh, we're almost out, so come on, let's... Uh, Let's keep our nose to the grindstone. Right now, the person's rewind, uh, fast forwarding through the video on a line, going, man, these kids are obnoxious. Come on. Chad, Armando, Ray, yeah. okay, let's go, okay? All right, what did they give us? Yep, yep, boom, boom. Good. So that's a leg, that's a leg. Do we have enough? For HL, yeah. reflexive property, good. Somebody noticed reflexive property. So yeah, if you mark it like that, and it's definitely right angles, you got HL. And your proof does that. Your proof just goes what was given, okay? You had to recognize the reflexive property to get a, your hypotenuse. So once you had your hypotenuse in your leg or your leg in your hypotenuse, you can finally just prove using HL triangle currency. That's it. Not bad? Ray? All good? Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead and try part B. I'll give you a couple minutes. I'll draw four sticks. Because there's four reasons. Thank you. 
You guys have about a minute left. Yeah, because remember, like I said, you can use any of the ones that you see right away. Yeah. And that's basically like the rest of your study gun, not, you know, you're going to realize you can use whichever one you see right away. Wait, give me a all right, so about 30 more seconds. Um, the four names I drew were Jose, Tina, Edith, and Armando. Two of them are easy. I think that's pretty crazy how, like, three people from the same group. Pure random. Super focused. No, seriously, it's pure random, and it was just like, really? Okay. I had a kid get picked uh, six times in a row for one day. I was like, dude, the universe loves you today. Okay, um, so here we go. Um, Armando, uh, what's our reason for step one? Nice. Woo! All right, uh, Edith, what was our second reason for our second step? Given. Woo! And Tina, what was our reason for step three? Uh, are they talking about angles or are they talking about the segments? All right, so Tina, they started off saying JK, not JK, is congruent to LK, right? And then they tell us MK is congruent to NK, okay? Um, why are those sides congruent to each other? It has something to do with step two. Can somebody help Tina out? Yeah. Definition yeah. Of midpoint. Yep. Definition of a midpoint. I told you. I told you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you said I was wrong. Because <laughs> let's. No, I said. Shh. I thought it was right. Okay. Um, honestly, if I saw that on a test that you said it was a bisector, I would still give you it. So if you said it was a bisector, I wouldn't oh, I wouldn't bat an eye. Um, because midpoint, they told us it was a midpoint. They didn't see anything about bisector, so that's why I went straight to the definition of midpoint. Definition of the midpoint is involving a bisector, correct? So am I going to mince words? No. Okay. So if you said definition midpoint or you know bisector, okay. Uh, Jose, what's our last reason for step four? What do they want us to prove? This, right? Jose, did we get a leg? Did we get a hypotenuse? So what's the reason that these two triangles are congruent?
Done. There you go. Good job. All right. Good job, kiddos. So HL triangle congruency. Done. Okay. All right. Um, one more proof and we are done. Question. Do you guys want me to write this all out or just bag and tag it? All right, let's write it all out. So we'll start with the markings. Do you guys want me to draw sticks? <laughs> so I rephrase the question. All right, where do I start? So they give us the givens. Yeah, so boom, boom. AD is the hypotenuse for this guy, and BC are congruent. Nice. Those are hypotenuses, are they not? Okay. And do we have a leg? Which leg? AB. The reflexive property strikes again. So notice how sometimes you use the longer leg, sometimes you use the shorter leg. It just depends on what you're working with. Does that make sense? All right, so we have enough to start going. So first things first, uh, we got angle CAB uh, and uh, angle DBA are right angles. All right, and that was given. Since given. Uh, step two, we had that AD is congruent to BC. And that was because, again, since it was given. And then step three, the reflexive property helped us out. So AB is being shared by both triangles. So, of course, AB is congruent to itself. That is the reflexive property. And that gave us, again, we had our hypotenuse given, we had our leg given. Since uh, we have right angles, we could use HL. So triangle ABC is congruent to the other triangle, triangle BAD. Dun, 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 dun. Bad to the bone. All right. And that's by or since the HL triangle congruency theorem. Okay, happy, happy? Okay. Your proofs are very similar to this. You have three proofs on your test, okay? Yeah. Um, I've seen those proofs in there. I've seen the proofs on your. Remember the uh, the quiz? Yeah, two of the ones on the quiz were very relevant. Okay. No, I, I need to. Getting sick over the weekend didn't help my <sighs> grading. All right, homework. All right, so page 298 <laughs> through page 303. <laughs> Okay, there's your homework. So some proofs. And I think lastly there was 
something involving congruency that looked really good. Okay, guys, thank you. Have a beautiful day.